What's up fellow gamers, Kevin J2010 here welcoming you back to some more Skies of Arcadia Legends. In the last episode, we, uh, we, Captain Drachma got all moody and went into the tavern. And we convinced him to take us along to get a Valuan passport and go to Valua. And the only way we're going to get one is by helping a Nazar merchant. So we're going to have to return to our ship here. Now you may have noticed I said, what's up fellow gamers as opposed to fellow gamers. Or hello fellow gamers. That's because I'm just thinking of change on my intro. I think it's because more in real, I say what's up more in real life than just saying hello. I won't go like, what's up? I say like more of like a, hey, what's up? That's, that's more how I am. But anyway. You see that stone reef straight ahead? Nazar is the desert land just beyond, just beyond that reef. However, normal ships cannot pass through that reef, therefore you must fly alongside it and go straight for a while. Eventually you will see the Southern Danal Strait. A valley-like area in between two islands. So just fly alongside the reef and head due east, huh? Alright, let's move. Alright. So as I said, you just want to head along here, so... There we're going! Flying around our little jack. You may have noticed that our last ship didn't have these uh, uh, wind streams coming off our ship. Uh, that's because that it basically means you're traveling at max speed. And hey, look, we got a turnaround attack on us. Um, in Final Fantasy, I believe it was called the back attack or something like that. But uh, that's a real pain to deal with these things. We do have one new enemy, and it was that puffball thing. Ah. Uh. I need having a stuffy nose. Anyway. Anyway, as you can see, we have eight here. That's because we got four, and then it, we got four again. Because, like, you get four at the beginning of the battle, then you get four on your first turn. So because we did that, I don't know, it's weird. Anyway. One thing I didn't notice, if you look in the top right there, it shows you what element they are. That gives you a general... That gives you general info on what their weakness is. So this is blue, so I'm pretty sure that means they're weak to yellow, but we don't have yellow yet, so we can't really go doing that. But uh, we'll take out the Thorkrin first. And you can just use Alpha Storm, I guess. On uh, that guy, I guess. And finally, we get to fight with Drachma, as you can see. Um, he's got... Oh, by the way, you can press the C stick and look around, people. Never mentioned this. He's got a hook hand. Normally, he'd have his regular hand, but that's his hook hand. Keeping him on blue, because we want to learn a little bit of blue magic. So, the Thorkrin's not dead. Alpha Storm, and we hit... Ooh. Oh, that, that, bleh, that back one must have been guarding or something. Here's an attack. Bam! And also I did 212, compared to Vice's 95. So, it's just a good sense of how much damage he can do. I do, like, do keep in mind he is a few levels higher than us. But I mean, he is just your straight up attacker. He's probably not my favorite, but he's probably one of the best partners you get, or best characters in the game. And, uh, oh man. Sometimes these battles can take a while, though. You know, no, don't use Cutlass Fury, that's a waste of time. Use Pyre, and you can use Alpha Storm. Did I mention what Encrem did? I think I did. Encrem is basically your. not Swords Dance in Pokemon. But basically, just your cheer. It increases... Yeah, I did tell you guys. It just increases your attack and defense. Um, it's very useful to know Increm, which is why I, I generally like to learn it. <clears throat> there we go. That was easy. Yes, Vice. Yes, it was easy. <laughs> he said that was easy. I just realized. Aha. He's five levels higher than us. Jesus. Still. Anyway. Heading along here, we're trying to get to the southern Danel Strait. Danel? Danel? I don't know. And we got a cutscene here. Black Pirate Balter Ship, the Blackbeard. Captain Balter, there's a Nazar merchant ship coming into view off port side. But there's a strange ship following it very closely. I don't recognize its markings. Gahahaha, <laughs> you have nothing to fear of a ship that old. Let's introduce these fools to the true meaning of fear. They will know that I, Balter, sent them plummeting to their deaths. 
All right, men, battle stations. Don't let them escape and take everything on board that isn't nailed down. Vice, there's a ship straight ahead heading right for us. I see a black skull. They're black pirates. So that's Balter, huh? What should we do, Captain? Hmm. We're vastly outnumbered. Don't let them board us. We'll fight it. Uh, we'll fight it out from a distance. Ready the cannons. If we see them attack, I want you to go into invasive maneuvers. Then, when you're in your sights, blast them. Aye aye, aye, aye Captain. Let's rip them to shreds, sir. Wait, how do you fight him from a distance? This game was what? Yes, this is actually something that I love this game for. It has ship battle mechanics. Gahaha! <laughs> how do you like that? Feel the power of my ship, the Blackbird. Now I shall teach you to tremble in fear before the power of the Black Pirates. Gahaha! <laughs> Listen up, boy. At the top of the screen, a three by three grid will appear. This is your input command screen. Think of it as a time gauge of sorts. Each turn is divided into three parts. For each part of each turn, you, Aka, or I can input one command. It's very simple. Um, thank God they didn't give some long drawn out explanation. As you can see, you can go to cannon. We have four cannons. I forget which ones are strongest. I think standards are strongest. Um, and that's basically all you want to do. You want to focus a lot. The way focusing works is it takes your spirit. When you focus, you get the spirit of everyone, I believe. It doesn't matter who focuses this time. <clears throat> Um, I'll explain how it works at the top, too, in a bit. I do love the music in, the, in these uh, fights, by the way. You want to focus up a lot because you want to save your uh, you want to save your cannons up because, as you can see, it's quite expensive. So, well, it's it's quite costly on spirit, I should say. And he missed with his black cannon. So, all right. Every once in a while, you'll see a column with a C at the top of the grid. During that turn, you will have a tactical advantage over your opponent. Concentrate all your firepower into that round. Also, certain turns have a different color shown at the top. These are turns in which your enemy is going to unleash a powerful attack. Make sure to use your guard command effectively. So as you can see, there's a yellow coming up. Yellow just means it's going to do a little bit more damage than normal. Because green generally means they won't attack you or they won't do that much. So what you want to do is you want to attack on the seas and you want to focus generally on the greens, our preparation. And whenever you see a green, you can prepare because he won't hit you that hard, or he might not hit you at all. But on the seas, you want to you want to try to attack because he definitely can't hit you, and you get to hit like extra damage. It's essentially like your it's like attack here, he he's weak, sort of thing. It's kind of like if Pokemon told you their weakness, which they kind of do. But I mean, <laughs> I do like this whole idea of dog fighting though. And it's like it's cool how it's an RPG, but yet there's like dogfights in it, and you watch you watch them fly around, and it's almost like not like a quick time event, but it's kind of like write the story your own way. Ow! I noticed we had yellow there. Now what's a little confusing is I said to do evasive action there or guard. Sometimes the guard will come after it. The game's a little weird that way. It's based on speed, but if you guard and he shoots before you go into evasive action, like on the, like if you're both on two or something, like on the second point in the grid, you still get the defense boost from the guard, even if you didn't attack him. Something's not right, Captain. It looks like he's preparing for something. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. He looks like he's going to try to get behind us. Most ships have their engines in the back, and that makes them more vulnerable from behind. But if he tries to get behind us in the meantime, he'll be wide open. What do you do? What do you want to do, boy? I believe you want to say, try to get behind him again. Now's our chance. He won't be expecting us to try and move around to his backside. I think. Could be wrong with that. Good job, boy. His ship doesn't have any cannons in the back. We've got a wide open shot at his engines. So I did pick the right thing. Um, that's one thing that this game does. This game kind of has branching... Um, like, branching battles. Like, if you had screwed up there he would hit you really hard for those next couple turns, so. 
You can use Sakri and stuff on your ship, which will heal it up quite nicely. I highly suggest doing it. Instead of doing 500, um, the new low number for Sakri is 4,000. And if you use Sacres or Sacre, it will do 8,000 instead of 1,000. So that's very useful to know, I'm sure. I think one more shot, he'll probably go out, actually. He's preparing an attack, but he can't hit us because we're behind him. And boom, right into his engine. Yeah, we took him out with a 4,400. That's a lot of damage, actually. Considering where we are in the game, 4,400's a lot. And we all got a level up, which is nice. We got a Captain Stripe and a Bomb. Those are two ships, two parts or items specific for um, your ship, so. Blast, you were lucky this time, but I will hunt you down and have my revenge. This I swear on the code of the Black Pirates. You will rue the day you ever cross paths with me. And somebody put out that fire. Vice, we did it. Yeah! yeah. Oh, Ow, what'd you do that for, Captain? We're not there yet, you idiot. Never take your hands off the wheel until we have come to a complete stop. Ha! Ha ha! Yeah, you idiot, why don't you watch what you're doing? It's a good thing Captain Drachma's here to keep you in line. Eko, why you little... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just couldn't resist you just just defeated Baltu the scary. Why don't you lighten up a little bit? We're almost there. Get ready. I must say, I, I rather enjoy that cutscene. Drachma and Vice do get along in that. They don't like each other, but they get along in a way. That reminds me, you should have received something called a Captain's Stripe. You'll receive one every major battle that you win. It's sort of like a trophy. If you use a Captain's Stripe, it will make the ship stronger. I see. Thanks for the advice, Captain. I am actually not going to use it, and you can probably all make your assumptions as to why. And if anyone who's played the game, you probably understand why. But I'm not going to use them right now. So, just I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> greetings, everyone. Welcome home. Or, let's say everyone. Just says, greetings, welcome home. We are the fleet that guards the Southern Danel Strait. We will escort you from this point. Oh, that would be greatly appreciated. Lead the way. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to give him an Indian accent, and if I do, I'm, I'm sorry if I offend all you Indians out there. I don't mean like actually like native to India Indians. Thank you very much. It would appear that you have safely brought me home. As I promised, here is a Valuan passport. Passport. <laughs> Alright, so this is what the passport looks like. We can finally get into Valua with this. I must get going. May the red moon watch over you and light your paths. <laughs> Off to Valua. Let's not waste any more time. Aye, aye. Little Jack full rudder turning 180 degrees to Valua. Full speed ahead. You received a Valuan passport. That's a special item. It doesn't matter. Um, one thing I want to talk about real quick is the uh, the music in this game. As I was saying, I love the music in this game. And the reason why I love the music in this game so much is it, just because it, it's it's so different. And it's it, I, I don't know why I love it. I guess I, I shouldn't have said that. But, I guess what I want to say is, if you guys agree with me that the music is really good, because I mean, it is, um, you can, they did release an actual soundtrack of this on CD, um, under the Japanese title of this game. It was titled Eternal Arcadia, which again is what this game was called in Japan. So, I highly suggest you guys, if you can... 
If you can find it, that'd be awesome. I couldn't find it online, so I had to kind of download it. But I mean, it's out there. You can get it. Um, like I really wish it was, like I, it's. See, for me, if I really feel it's worth my money, I will buy the hard copy of something. And this is one of those games where the OST, I would buy a hard copy, but I couldn't find the hard copy anywhere. The only thing I did find is somewhere, something on Amazon. Um, they got some voice actors or something to actually read scenes from this game. Which I think is really cool, and I'm considering buying that someday. But, uh... But, uh... That's about all I can really say about all that. I just really love the music in this game, so... Um, I do now have the whole OST and soft copy form. Um, first thing I want to do is from Sailor's Island, you want to head... Essentially, I believe, around due north of it. I know what I'm looking for, I just gotta look at it. and I'll, There it is. I think it's over here. On this little island right here. Yeah, so anyway, you want to come right over here to this island, and we got our second discovery. We find we have found the Guidestones. To the north, the Imperial City, Valua. Caution, low visibility. To the east, the City of Sand, Nazrad. Caution, strong currents. To the west, Sailor's Island. Caution, too much Lakwa. Ha 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 ha. They make a joke about pirates. Well, let's get some fish. Oh, are these uh, sky sardines? Because they are, as I said, I want... It's good if you collect a few of those. Let's see what we got. I don't know why I went to Aka to check. Yeah, we, there's Sky Sardis. So we now have 19. As I said, you want about... You'd want about uh, 10 of those. And now we have more. Um, What are you? What are you? I don't know what you are. This region is called Mid-Ocean. All of the trade routes pass through here. That's Sailor's Island. Okay, you're just telling me things I would have figured out if I didn't know where to go. I want to come over here. Because this guy flying way up here. You know, I haven't done a real RPG, like a real one in a while. Like, Mega Man Battle Network is one thing, but I haven't done a real big RPG like this in a while. I forgot how annoying random battles were. Anyway. <laughs> I see you've caught some moonfish. Here, let's feed the little critter. Feed the bird moonfish. Because remember, we do have two moonfish that we got on Sailor's Island, so we want to make sure we get them. Hmm, that thing is getting big. Jeez, I wonder how much more it'll grow. Ew, it coughed something up. Oh, wait, there's something inside the, um, hairball. Tell you what, as a token of my appreciation, you can keep whatever the bird spits up, okay? That's kind of... How do you know that something's going to show up every time? Anyway, we got something here called a Rhizlum Crystal. There's a spell called Rhizlum. It's basically your max revive, like in Pokemon. It's just... Or your uh, full Phoenix down. I forget what it's called in Final Fantasy when you get a full one. Is it like a full down? I don't know. It's basically your Phoenix down, just to give you full health. What do we call it like an Ultra Phoenix or something? And we got one more moonfish to feed the bird. So we're gonna feed him that. Hmm, that thing's getting big. Jeez, I wonder how much how much more it will grow. Ew, it coughed up something. Oh wait, there's something inside the um hairball. Tell you what, as a token my pre they say the same thing every time. We get a warrior's rune. This is a, um, a quip, but, oh, as you can see, look how big your little bird has grown, Maria. It's all thanks to this young man and his friends. Uh huh? Maria, did you just say something? M Maria! Vice, I... I can't thank you enough. I don't know how many years it's been since I've heard Maria's voice. What? You mean to tell me that your own daughter hasn't spoken to you in years? Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up there, honey. I'm still single. I don't even have a wife, let alone a kid. Maria's not my kid. She, uh, lost her family a few years back. I 
I may not look the part now, but at one point in my life, I was a Valuan soldier. I worked for Mendoza, a former admiral of the Valuan Armada, as a doctor on board his flagship. And Maria is his daughter, the daughter of, Valuan, of a Valuan admiral. However, when she was still very young, she lost her father and the rest of her family in a horrible accident. It was a horrifying experience for such a little kid to go through. Since then, she hasn't shown a hint of emotion or spoken a single word. And I don't blame her either. The poor kid had to watch her family ship with all of her family still on board, sink below the clouds. So I took her under my wing and retired from the military, and that's when I became a free ship doctor. That's why it's sort of my responsibility to make sure Maria is happy. It's my responsibility and my punishment of sorts. Oh, oh, I'll be right there, Maria. Ever since she stopped talking, whenever she needs me, she just rings her bell like that. And every time I hear that bell, my heart nearly breaks. Vice, I beg of you, please find more moonfish. The little bird, for whatever reason, seems to be getting through to Maria. She seems to be coming out of her shell at long last. Who knows? Maybe Maria will actually smile again someday. <laughs> I probably shouldn't get my hopes up. But I can't help it. But I'm going to bet on you. Something tells me that if anyone can heal Maria's wounds, it's you. I'm counting on you, Vice. Uh -huh. And that is what we call a rather touching scene. And one final thing I want to do this episode. I know this episode's gone on a little long. I'm just going to quickly come here to Sailor's Island. Um, I'm gonna go to Vice, uh, Vice's equipment, because I remember we just got that Warrior's Rune. And that's gonna increase his stats a lot, because it's actually a really good item. I would suggest equipping it for now. And we're gonna go to the Sailor's Guild. Because we now have a new discovery, and we, uh, took out one of the Wanted List pirates. This is the Sailor's Guild. You can get information about ships and general sailing tips here. We also purchased, so if you made discoveries, blah, 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 don't forget to blah, blah, blah. I hear that you defeated one of the bounties. Well done. Here's your reward. You earned it. You get a thousand gold for defeating Balter the Blackbearded. And we're going to want to sell our info on the guide stones. You don't get that much of it. It depends on how hard it is to find. Um, in reality, that one's not that hard. So, I mean, we found it. It's hard to believe that it's a discovery, though, considering it says everything's name, like Valua. And Sailor's Island, which means if, like, they know about Sailor's Island, it's kind of like, why are you... It's weird that way. Um, I'm just going to check to see if the ship part merchant has any, uh, stuff in yet, actually. Oh, he's still out of stock. Okay. I was just wondering. It doesn't really matter, but, uh, I was just checking. And, um, I'm going to quickly come into here, and I'm actually just going to save real quick. All right. Anyway. So now that I've saved, I'm just going to quickly run over here to the um, weapon shop and see if I can just get those last those last uh, couple of armor things that I, I probably should have picked up while I had the chance, but I didn't have any money to. Um, is there anything good here, actually? Well, we can get two of these. Not seven, two. We're going to Aka and Drachma. And that's about all we need there. Anything that we can sell weapon-wise? Um, his artificial arm. He, we just sold his artificial his artificial arm. That's kind of funny. And we can sell all these. As I said, there's no real need in keeping any of them. So, there you go. Oh, oh yeah. Bomb, by the way, is basically like a cannon in an item. So if you want to shoot a pretty weak cannon for no spirit, you can use the items. So that's about that. And um, I think it's about time we end the episode. So next time on Skies of Arcadia Legends, we are going to be heading out to Valua to save our family. I'll see you guys all next time.